As many of you probably know, Caterpillar, better known as just Cat, is one of the powerhouse engine builders in the world of commercial trucks, mining equipment, construction equipment, marine generators, forestry, oil and gas, and a lot more. Basically, if you have something big and it needs an engine, Caterpillar probably makes an engine for it or they just make the equipment itself. With that being said, the on-the-road truck market, which is commercial trucks, semi-trucks, tractors, whatever you want to call them, is missing from Caterpillar's portfolio. But it wasn't always this way. At one point, Caterpillar was one of the dominant forces in the on-the-road truck world. They controlled, at some points, up to 40% of that market. So the question is, why did they stop making on-the-road truck engines? What happened? So sit back and get comfy, because today I'm going to tell you exactly why Caterpillar ended up leaving the commercial truck world. <laughs> to really quickly boil this down, Caterpillar left the on-the-road truck world, the commercial truck world, the semi-truck world, whatever you want to call it. They left it for one reason, and one very simple reason, and that's emissions compliance. But, as you'll see in the video, there's a little bit more nuance to it, and there's a little bit more to the story than just that. To fully understand the emissions situation, we can rewind the clock to 1990. During this year, there were amendments added to the Clean Air Act, which meant that diesel engines needed to output less emissions and the enforcement was set to start in 1994, which meant that all 1994 models needed to meet the new standards. The bar for emissions output was continually raised and enforced through the Clean Air Act and EPA all the way up until now. It wasn't until around 2007 that things got much tougher, which is when you also saw new emission systems plopped onto trucks that you and I buy, such as Duramax and Cummins trucks. When these changes went through in 2007, CAT decided to use a very different emission system than everyone else with their ACERT system, which stands for Advanced Combustion Emission Reduction Technology. And the ACERT system cost CAT an estimated $500 million, and it was supposed to be a replacement for exhaust gas recirculation. Fun fact, when the new emission standards went through in 2002, CAT rejected exhaust gas recirculation entirely, which meant that they had to pay a pretty big fine for each engine that they built within a certain time frame because the engines weren't up to the EPA standards, at least until the EPA certified their ACERT system. Imagine that, paying the government extra money somehow fixes the problem of your engines not meeting the emission standards. It's almost like it was never about emissions output in the first place, uh, but that's a topic for a different time. Regardless of your stance on emission systems, the point is that CAT made a huge investment and gamble on ACERT being superior to EGR, and ultimately, it wasn't. In the long run, they were having tons of warranty issues with ACERT equipped engines on top of losing market share, mostly to Cummins. The combination of those two things made it barely profitable for them at all to build on the road truck engines. And on top of that, they weren't going to meet the upcoming 2010 emission standards, which were going to be even stricter than the standards that they were already struggling with. Because of the upcoming emission standard changes, market share being lost to Cummins and other companies, as well as warranty claims, CAT announced in 2008 that they'd be leaving the on-the-road truck engine market in 2010 before the emissions changes went into effect. On the same day, they also announced that they'd be partnering with Navistar, but more on that later in the video. That begs the question though, why not just switch to EGR, add a DPF system and SCR, and continue to compete with other companies? Well, financially, it doesn't make sense. They were already spending a large majority of their R&D budget on making their on-the-road truck engines emissions compliant, plus the warranty claims on top of that. It just didn't make sense, especially when you consider that even with their market dominance, at one point controlling upwards of 40% of the on-the-road truck engine market, these engines only accounted for about 10% of their income. When you consider just how much money that they were dumping into making their emission systems work, and all the headaches that were involved with that, and that it was only for 10% of their income, it makes sense to just shut that program down and focus on more profitable parts of your business. Ultimately though, they were forced out of the market by an artificial need for changing their products. The need for cleaner and cleaner engines is ultimately what crushed them because they couldn't get their emission systems dialed in to a point that their customers were satisfied with the reliability. So really, you can thank the EPA for crushing another company. To be fair though, their 2008 announcement to stop making on-the-road truck engines also aligns with the 2008 stock market crash, which saw their stock price fall dramatically. I should also bring up the fact that companies like Kenworth or Peterbilt, the companies that build trucks, 
ultimately could one day cut off an engine supplier such as CAT and introduce their own line of engines or create an exclusive partnership with a different engine supplier. With that in mind, CAT didn't just want to be another engine supplier for on-the-road trucks, but they also wanted to be one of the companies building the trucks around the engine. So they got into the truck building market. So after killing off their engines in 2010, they launched their CAT truck in 2012. And some of these trucks even included the CAT CT15 engine, which was based on the C15 engine, but that engine still didn't meet emission standards, which meant low sales and more fines from the EPA. With that in mind, the CAT truck was generally fitted with an international engine, which is where that Navistar partnership I mentioned earlier comes into play. Ironically though, the international engine just wasn't as reliable or as powerful as the old CAT engines, which meant that CAT had their branding on a truck with an engine that was worse than a CAT engine. So simply put, the CAT truck sucked. It was unreliable and basically everyone was buying other trucks such as Kenworth or Peterbilt and so on. Ultimately, this led to CAT shutting down their truck building venture in 2016, which meant that they had fully exited the new manufacturing of trucks and engines. But they didn't just say f*** it and leave their old customers out to dry, so they shifted their focus towards offering parts to help keep their old engines on the road longer. So that's the short story of how Caterpillar or CAT went from absolutely dominating the on-the-road truck market, at some points controlling up to 40% of that market. They were absolutely dominated for decades. Their engines were loved. They were super reliable, super powerful. Everyone loved them. And they were one of the few companies that was offering a V8 engine as opposed to an inline six engine, which was also a very popular option. And then one day just disappeared. They just stopped making truck engines. And it's almost entirely because of emissions compliance, the EPA fines, and they just simply could not put together a product that met those EPA standard regulations. That was followed up with their attempt to build their own truck rather than just the engine, with, which was a partnership with Navistar International, and that meant that the CAT truck had an international motor, which wasn't even as good as the CAT motor, and then customers just didn't enjoy that truck at all. It was a poorly built truck, so they just said F it and just exited the truck building and engine building industry entirely. That being said, they're still a massive powerhouse in a bazillion other industries, most notably construction and mining, but also other industries such as marine uh, generators and a whole bunch more. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to get subscribed. Check out some of the other videos on the channel. While you're getting subscribed, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see in the future or if there's anything I missed out on this video, anything you want to add, drop it down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.